We're talking about the Prague Spring, so-called Prague Spring, although it's a longer process, uh, um, which underlines the crisis of Stalinism in the post-war period. One of the biggest movements sh shaking uh, uh, the Stalinist uh, regimes from their foundations, uh, there were others, uh, big movements, leading in the direction of uh, uh, trying to regenerate to regenerating socialism on a democratic basis. And uh, there are many different components in this movement which I'll try to explain the dynamics of it and how it came along and uh, how it, uh, it rose and how it was defeated and the consequences, uh, giving a bit of a context uh, in, uh, in terms of international uh, uh, relations in the world at the time. And also going back to the roots of the Czechoslovak regime, how, how it came to power and the consequences of uh, how the transition to uh, get rid of capitalism and uh, towards a planned economy impacted then the, uh, uh, the perspectives and uh, how the movement developed in uh, 1968 is also a consequence of, uh, of that. Uh, to start, uh, the Prague Spring uh, 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 was uh, sharply uh, suppressed by the intervention, the military intervention of uh, the Soviet Union and around the Soviet Union by the Warsaw Pact. Uh, the Warsaw Pact was a military alliance of the Eastern Bloc countries with the Soviet Union. Uh, almost every country uh, led by Stalinist uh, regimes uh, participated in, uh, in the suppression of the Prague Spring Movement in uh, August uh, uh, 1968, uh, except for Romania, uh, which uh, was then hailed as a liberal Stalinist regime in the West. Uh, and we know how uh, things have developed in Romania uh, since, since that and uh, uh, brought to the fall of the regime uh, of Ceausescu. Uh, Romania refused to participate in, this, uh, in the suppression of the Prague Spring at the time. Uh, but going back to the movement and how it came about, uh, well, the demonstrators were uh, greeting uh, Soviet troops uh, entering uh, Prague and, and the other towns in, in uh, Czechoslovakia uh, with the slogan, Lenin, wake up, Brezhnev has gone mad. And that kind of uh, epitomized the psychology of the mass of the people in, uh, in this movement. They, uh, uh, most of the uh, students, the intelligentsia, and the workers uh, who were participating in this big wave of mobilizations had in mind uh, a, a, a target, which was not the idea of uh, going back to capitalism. Uh, this is a kind of um, uh, myth that has been created and has been uh, also uh, fueled by the, the uh, posterior evolution of the leaders of the Pla Prague Spring, uh, Dubček uh, first, for example, who supported the so-called Velvet Revolution of 1989 and basically uh, the, the whole movement towards uh, the restoration of capitalism. But at the time, uh, it was a different thing. And uh, the aim uh, of uh, this uh, revolutionary mobilization was uh, to challenge the domination over society of uh, the bureaucracy, uh, of the uh, Soviet bureaucracy. There were no form formally not uh, Soviets in uh, in, uh, in Czechoslovakia uh, at the time or even uh, before. Uh, the regime in Czechoslovakia was established uh, by uh, a combination of revolutionary, uh, of a revolutionary uprising and process of uh, uh, mass mobilization of the working class and the presence of the Red Army, obviously, because the Red Army was, uh, 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 was uh, the liberator troops uh, entering Prague and, uh, and the Czech Republic in 1945, in May 1945, uh, uh, and chasing, uh, formally wiping out uh, the last uh, Nazi resistance uh, of occupied uh, Czechoslovakia. Uh, so basically, uh, the, the regime coming out of that, uh, that period, of that process, uh, was um, a combination of revolutionary features uh, by expropriating the capitalists uh, uh, who collaborated with the Nazi Germany occupation, most of them. Uh, uh, they were expropriated, their properties were expropriated, were put under 
uh, workers' management and control for a limited period of time in the transition between 45 and 48. Uh, the, the, all the workers' organization exploded in terms of membership, uh, strength, uh, roots in the working class. It was an impressive show, uh, but it was dominated by the Communist Party, which was uh, following uh, Stalinist uh, uh, line in uh, in the whole uh, in the whole st uh, struggle against uh, Nazi occupation, the anti-fascist struggle, and then in the transition from 45 to 48. Uh, defending the idea of creating a, a people's republic, uh, a sort of uh, hybrid between uh, bourgeois democracy and socialism uh, without uh, pushing for further uh, the transition to the abolition of capitalism. And the abolition of capitalism was brought about uh, by uh, a combination of the internal revolutionary wave, the strength of the communist movement and the communist party, which was dominating the trade unions, the working class, uh, in uh, 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 crushing uh, with a crushing majority, uh, because of the role they played in the in the in the resistance movement before, uh, and uh, a combination of the international uh, relations between the big powers, uh, which also had an impact in uh, shaping up the whole process from 45 to 48. Uh, in, in the previous period, when the liberation happened, uh, in, uh, after the uprising in Prague, which saw an important uh, mass participation of the workers of Prague uh, for uh, five days of uh, fierce fighting and uh, hundreds of people were killed against the Nazis, uh, uh, the uprising in Prague was uh, the biggest uh, show of workers' power in, uh, in arms, workers in arms, with the militias organized by the Communist Party and the other uh, anti-fascist parties. Um, but uh, uh, the, the whole process was frozen by the Stalinist leadership uh, with the idea that uh, the, the most important strategic asset of uh, which would uh, defend or uh, um, screen the Soviet Union for, for uh, future repetition and allow the Soviet Union to rebuild itself after uh, the destructions of the war um, uh, was uh, guaranteed by the alliance with the allied powers, uh, Britain and the United States uh, in particular. Uh, the anti-fascist alliance, the three big powers alliance, as uh, you want to call. And so uh, Stalin's Soviet Union, and Stalin in particular, uh, were pursuing a policy of uh, appeasement with the so-called democratic powers of the West, uh, which uh, had as a casualty uh, a number of the development of the process of the revolution in the post-war period. In a number of countries, which were occupied by the Red Army, and because of the relationship of forces uh, between the working class and the ruling class, and the presence of the Red Army, uh, and the armed uh, workers, the armed militias, the armed uh, partisans, and so on, uh, the relationship of forces was so favorable to, uh, to the revolutionary side that the reaction didn't really have much uh, uh, social base to base uh, themselves upon. In other countries where, like Italy or, or Greece or France, for example, uh, which were established uh, in, the, in the pact between um, Stalin, Churchill, and uh, Roosevelt, and then uh, uh, with the Americans in general, because Roosevelt uh, died at some point, <coughs> um, uh, they established a partition of the world in spheres of influence. And uh, Eastern Europe was to be uh, part of the Soviet sphere of influence. Uh, the, other, uh, the other countries, although they experienced and went through uh, analogous and even uh, stronger in, in certain ways uh, revolutionary waves uh, in the struggle against uh, fascism, uh, were uh, to be preserved as uh, part of the sphere of influence of uh, US imperialism or British imperialism uh, in, in, in a way of preserving their capitalist uh, uh, setup, their, their capitalist constitution and state. And therefore, <coughs> the policies of the Stalinist uh, uh, Comintern before the dissolution of the Comintern, which, by the way, was decided by Stalin in May 1943 as a gift in uh, an exchange uh, to his uh, democratic imperialist pa uh, partners, uh, by suppressing the inter Communist International, the message was, we are not pursuing 
uh, the uh, development of, uh, of uh, revolutionary uh, of revolutionary overthrow of capitalism throughout the world. Uh, the Communist International was dissolved in, uh, in uh, May 1943 as, uh, as a consequence of this policy. In uh, 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 that policy also meant uh, 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 an adaptation of the Communist parties to the national liberation struggle, trying to, pre to present and trying to uh, portray the national liberation struggle as, uh, uh, as a national struggle against uh, Nazi occupation. And that, uh, in, in the case of the, of the Czech and Czechoslovakia in general, uh, revolution of 45-48 meant a coalition government uh, with uh, the remaining bourgeois parties in a situation where uh, uh, the bourgeoisie fled with the Nazis. Uh, there was no alternative armed power in the country other than the Red Army and the partisan uh, uh, armed uh, militia. Uh, but the Stalinists collaborated and, and propped up and allowed the, rebuild, uh, the re uh, rebuilding uh, a number of bourgeois parties, a number of uh, petty bourgeois parties, uh, and uh, uh, together with them in a coalition government staged a sort of uh, fiction of bourgeois democracy for, for a number of years until uh, the, the international situation changed. Um, I, don't ha I don't have much time to go into that, but uh, th there are elements of revolution and counter-revolution in all these uh, processes, and the strength of the Communist Party uh, in the Czech Republic, in uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, which uh, was uh, was immense. Uh, the Communist Party uh, came out of the resistance war as the main force. In free elections uh, in 1947, got uh, about 40 percent of the vote. Uh, uh, the, the party. Uh, went from 28,000 members in, uh, uh, in May 1945, when, uh, when the Prague uh, uprising happened and the liberation happened, to about uh, three quarters of a million, 750,000 members uh, by December of the same year. So just imagine this enormous movement, uh, the, the working ca class swelling uh, the ranks of the Communist Party and strengthening uh, the leadership of the Communist Party. Uh, in all this process, we have uh, a contradiction between a revolutionary push from the working class uh, e expressed in the structures of the Communist Party and the trade unions, the revolutionary trade unions that were built in the process of uh, the anti-fascist struggle, and then uh, became a huge, powerful force uh, in 1945, in the second half of 1945 reaching uh, more than one and a half million members, uh, organizing the whole working class. Uh, a, a, a huge movement of workers' councils uh, developing. But obviously, all this movement, which had a enormous, uh, uh, put an enormous revolutionary pressure on the Communist Party, on the trade union leadership, on the government, the Popular Front government, uh, and uh, for, for, for an immediate transition uh, towards socialism, that was the aim. Uh, was reflected uh, in the beginning in the, in the uh, structures of the Communist Party and the Revolutionary Trade Union in uh, clandestinity internally uh, in, uh, in Czechoslovakia during the anti-fascist struggle. But then uh, the leadership of these structures were completely overruled and uh, substituted by the exiled leadership, which was based in Moscow, uh, came back and, uh, and uh, stepped as uh, took the position of, uh, of leadership. Their policy was to freeze the revolutionary process and prevent uh, a revolution to, to happen, to keep it uh, at the stage of a national revolution, keep it at the stage of uh, a, a people's republic, which uh, would not mean, uh, the, the, uh, for example, the establishment of a planned <coughs> economy and the expropriation of uh, capitalism. Uh, but under the pressure of uh, the working class, uh, they had to, even the bourgeois, had to agree uh, to a number of uh, measures that were pointing in the direction of uh, a planned economy. They even agreed to an emergency economic plan, a two years plan, uh, to uh, re-establish the uh, productive forces of uh, Czechoslovakia after the war. Uh, and uh, a, a, a sweeping movement of uh, support to nationalization measures uh, going from the heavy industry to the banking system 
uh, to uh, distribution to all uh, the aspects of the economy in uh, uh, Czechoslovakia developed very rapidly after uh, the liberation uh, uh, occurred. Uh, it was a spontaneous movement of the working class. Uh, uh, it was uh, a huge wave that the Communist Party could not completely uh, fence off, although their policy was completely different, uh, was to keep the status quo, basically, and limit the transition to, uh, free freeze the transition, really. Uh, and they pursued this policy up until 1947. At uh, the end of 1947, there is something that changes. Uh, just a little quote about uh, of Stalin uh, to, to show this, uh, this uh, the approach of the Stalinist leadership to, to the process. In November 1944, but that is uh, reiterated with uh, many declarations afterwards, uh, Stalin uh, stated that the alliance between the USSR, Great Britain, and the United States of America is founded not on casual transitory considerations, but on vital and lasting interests. So basically, the Soviet Union, the worker state, uh, the revolutionary heir of October, uh, um, according to Stalin, had strategic and long-lasting interest in an alliance with uh, the main imperialist powers coming out victorious from, uh, from the world, the war. Um, obviously, that wasn't the case. Uh, the uh, behavior of the, of the US uh, strategies during the war for it was to establish connections with the Nazi regime uh, when it was clear that Nazi Germany was to be defeated uh, and uh, to, to the Germans also reached out to the Americans and the British uh, in order to uh, arrive at a sort of uh, negotiated or uh, uh, most agreeable uh, fall of, uh, of the Nazi regime, uh, which was uh, meant to prevent uh, the, the victory and the conquer uh, of by the Red Army of large uh, part of, uh, of Eastern Europe. And they actually, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's quite, uh, it's not taught so much in, uh, in uh, academic history, but uh, it's quite striking that, for example, the Germans, <coughs> the Nazi uh, troops, uh, after, uh, in the last part of the war, were uh, completely moved out of the way of the Americans to accelerate the, uh, uh, the rate of conquest and advance of the, of the US troops and Allied troops on the West. And the German general staff moved, uh, left only 26 German divisions on the Western Front uh, to defend the Western Front against uh, the Allied troops' uh, advance and concentrated all their forces uh, to the east towards uh, Russia, 170 divisions on that front. That shows the type of uh, 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 struggle that uh, was going on. And there was also uh, an attempt to uh, um, push Amer the Americans to enter uh, Czechoslovakia before the uprising in Prague. Uh, at that point, uh, it, was already, uh, it had already been agreed uh, that Czechoslovakia should be in the sphere of influence of the Soviet Union, but still they allied uh, so reliable in terms of uh, uh, Stalin's uh, expectations, were plotting ways of preventing uh, the expansion of uh, the sphere of influence of uh, the Soviet Union. Because they were uh, rightly uh, concerned of the revolutionary impact of this uh, of this advance of the of the Red Army. <coughs> the regime established in 1948 was a somersault, a complete uh, one of the many 180 degrees turn of the Stalinist uh, policy, and, and it was caused by a change in war and change in world relations. Uh, because obviously, uh, the the imperialists uh, had uh, an, uh, needed the Soviet Union to fight against Nazi Germany. And, and the Second World War is, in fact, a, a titanic struggle between the Soviet Union and, uh, and Nazi Germany, and uh, with very secondary, important but secondary participation of the uh, imperialist allied troops. Uh, that's where most of the fighting, that's where the strategic uh, changes in the balance of forces was determined. Uh, it was on the Eastern Front uh, in, during the Second World War. <coughs> um, but uh, yeah, these reliable allies uh, had been uh, uh, at, uh, 
at a complete, uh, on complete diverging interests from uh, those of the Soviet Union. And so by uh, the, the beginning of uh, 1947, uh, there is a U-turn in the U.S. policy towards Europe uh, with uh, a return to anti-communism, uh, to raising the, the threat of communism as, as the main uh, guiding line for U.S. intervention. That coincided with the uh, Marshall Plan uh, uh, to stabilize Europe and uh, counter the revolutionary wave that was swiping uh, all uh, European countries uh, by uh, means of... Uh, 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 foreign uh, direct investment by the United States, the U.S. loans to Britain, to France, to other countries. And there was also an illusion by Stalin that uh, reconstruction in the Soviet Union would be allowed by a U.S. loan as well. So <laughs> that's the level of uh, hallucination and uh, 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 I would say, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a mistake, but uh, a complete misunderstanding, a misreading of, uh, of the class forces and why uh, they were uh, 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 going towards uh, a breakup of the, of the Great Alliance. After the war, when the situation was beginning to stabilize, uh, the British and US didn't need the alliance with the Soviet Union anymore, so <coughs> they entered into a collision course. And the reaction in Moscow was a uh, complete panic uh, reaction uh, with another 180 degree uh, turn. Uh, which was uh, uh, going back to the policies of the previous period, uh, the third uh, period policies of uh, uh, complete uh, left-wing uh, uh, extremist uh, policies, which meant for, for, the, the Czech, uh, for Czechoslovakia that the Communist par uh, Party had to abandon the United Front uh, and the collaboration with the Bourgeois Party and go towards uh, seizing power and completing the uh, overthrow of capitalism and uh, implementing a regime of, uh, similar to that of the Soviet Union. So why have, uh, have, uh, have I spoken about this? Because that shapes uh, the future events. Uh, the type of regime that was uh, built uh, in Czechoslovakia was built uh, under uh, an, an immense uh, participation and, and uh, uh, revolutionary commitment of the working class. Uh, it had to give to the working class certain type of uh, uh, allowance uh, for, uh, uh, for, um, uh, for example, uh, freedom of uh, organization, freedom uh, of speech to a certain degree. Uh, but by the turn in 1948, in February, when, uh, when uh, the Communist Party seizes uh, power in uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, they, uh, they, they do that with a massive support on part of the population. Uh, so there are elements which are reactionary and elements which are extremely progressive in all this process. And they establish uh, a regime which is uh, based on the, on the economic plan and the expropriation of uh, the economy uh, to the image of the existing uh, Soviet Union regime. A regime uh, that we call and we characterize as Marxist, as uh, uh, proletarian Bonapartism, uh, in the sense that the working class is nominally uh, the ruling class, uh, but it has uh, been uh, expropriated uh, by a bureaucratic uh, apparatus uh, which is embodied by the state and this huge bureaucracy uh, uh, expropriates uh, the, the political rights of the ruling class. So the, the working class which was uh, part of this enormous uh, revolutionary ferment before 1945 is uh, uh, reigned in by uh, the Stalinist leadership uh, and uh, passivized, and all the energies of the working class in, the Czech in Czechoslovakia uh, were turned on the internal front, on the economic front, to fight for uh, the the, uh, meeting the economic plan, to reestablishing uh, the basis of uh, the productive forces, uh, we, uh, demanding huge uh, sacrifices, which the workers willingly uh, uh, went along with. So that shows the level of support that the uh, Stalinist lead leadership had uh, enjoyed at that time amongst the, the mass of the population in the Czech Republic, especially the working class, but also the peasantry and so on. A number of reforms were, uh, were granted, which were based on the expropriation of the economy, uh, for example, uh, uh, on, uh, uh, by establishing a plan in agriculture and distributing uh, the lands and uh, 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 
that were expiated to the uh, German collaborators and, uh, and the uh, Czech, uh, Czechoslovak ruling class. Uh, and uh, the introduction of uh, uh, a planned economy uh, with the nationalization of almost everything, almost everything. Uh, very, very uh, little was left uh, to, to be nationalized. Uh, 20 years later, uh, what happened that provoked this huge um, revolutionary wave against, uh, against um, the most oppressive aspects of that regime? Uh, in order to uh, discipline the working class from 1948 onwards, there is uh, a, a process of Stalinization of the party, which means uh, a number of uh, purge trials, a number of uh, uh, leaders or uh, people who had authority because of the role they played in the liberation struggle, but were still putting forward the line of mobilizing or resting on uh, the active participation of the working class were targeted and removed, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the push by the, the communist leadership, which enjoyed of uh, this huge, enormous authority uh, because of the role they played in the previous period, uh, the Stalinists, uh, effectively managed to control the process, the revolutionary process, and. Uh, to divert the energies, the revolutionary energies of the working class onto the internal front, on the economic field, and so on. But that was uh, at a huge cost. It was uh, at an enormous cost uh, from the point of view of the uh, uh, quality of life, of the, of the conditions of life of the workers, and so on. They uh, paid an enormous price in uh, uh, raising up again uh, the uh, Czechoslovakia to the levels uh, uh, that where uh, the productive forces were at before the war. Um, in, in, the, in the early 1960s, there is a slowing down of uh, economic growth. Uh, all uh, the benefits of the planned economy started to wear out uh, because of a number of reasons. Uh, there is the policy by the Soviet Union of uh, uh, drawing out uh, technology out of the countries that uh, were liberated, especially Germany, but also other countries, including <coughs> Czechoslovakia, uh, machinery and so on. There is also the wearing out of the existing machinery and the uh, problem of underinvestment in the planned, econ planned economy. Also, uh, uh, the economy was uh, paying a price for uh, the policies of uh, the Stalinist Communist Party in the previous period. For example, the, the uh, Czechoslovak communists, uh, uh, they supported uh, the idea of the deportation of all the German-speaking uh, minority of, uh, of Czechoslovakia. They were accused of uh, <coughs> collaborating with the Nazis. Only in part uh, this accusation uh, is true, especially regarding the ruling class. Uh, obviously, the German uh, uh, minority, Czech minority, uh, speaking German, uh, were uh, a disproportionate part of uh, the Czech, uh, Czechoslovak ruling class, and they uh, collaborated actively with the Nazis. Uh, but it meant also the deportation of about 20% of the working class out of Czechoslovakia, 20% of the working class. And uh, a lot of these workers were not fascists or were not <laughs> fascist collaborators. They just happened to be German, uh, part of the German minority. That opened holes in the, in the planned economy because a lot of these workers were uh, specialized workers. And they could not be subst substituted just by recruiting new layers of the working class out of the peasantry uh, in Slovakia or in the Czech Republic. There were other problems. Uh, there was, uh, uh, like in all uh, Eastern European countries, each national bureaucracy was uh, uh, planning to uh, be as much as possible uh, independent economically from the others because there were tensions and uh, also from the Soviet Union because they were aiming at having <coughs> their own independence. Um, and that provoked conflicts and frictions uh, throughout uh, the, the East Eur Eastern European bloc and uh, important conflicts uh, like, for example, the Tito-Stalin clash uh, between Yugoslavia and the U Soviet Union, but uh, also other minor uh, uh, frictions and, and conflicts uh, between national bureaucracies. 
um, so they were aiming at developing their own uh, particular base. Uh, and in the Czech Republic, the Communist Party enjoyed of a massive support, as we have seen. Uh, so they had the social basis to, to base themselves upon. Uh, they tried uh, to uh, counter the, uh, the slowing down of the planned economy, which was uh, a planned economy applied with uh, bureaucratic methods to an economy which was particularly more developed than that of the Soviet Union, for example. Already starting from a level, uh, even after the destructions of the war, uh, uh, an industrial level which was uh, uh, of a qualitatively uh, different level from uh, uh, the backward productive forces of the Soviet Union. So the, the, planned, the, the bureaucratically planned economy, uh, which was aimed at developing heavy industry and so on, uh, uh, didn't really manage to, uh, to develop in an harmonious form uh, the whole economy like in the Soviet Union, but even worse than in the Soviet Union, it ended up into a crisis in the early 60s, which uh, provoked a crisis within the Communist Party uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, the Czech Communist Party. Uh, the crisis uh, practically brought to a stagnation and there was a problem of consumer goods not being available. Uh, so all the efforts uh, and the sacrifices of the working class were exposed. Uh, the working class didn't really see uh, a benefit uh, in continuing that. And the bureaucracy was divided on how to, uh, how to face this. To this also international developments, the crisis uh, in the Soviet Union, the exposure of the, uh, by Khrushchev, uh, which destabilized the confidence in, uh, in uh, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in, uh, all, uh, all around the world, uh, by exposing the crimes of Stalin and so on, the destalinization, uh, uh, which was uh, uh, then applied in, uh, in uh, all the other countries, the satellite countries of the Soviet Union. Uh, the then leader Novotny uh, of the Communist Party, the Czech Communist Party, attempted a number of reforms, but these reforms uh, were not successful. They just uh, brought to even a bigger uh, crisis. So uh, by the end of the 1960s, in 1967, the situation was of uh, uh, a growing opposition within the Communist Party uh, to the policies of Novotny, trying to find a way out of... Uh, of this uh, situation, uh, which was then uh, crystallized by an event which was, uh, could, could seem uh, secondary, which was uh, a big row, uh, a big uh, opposition statement by uh, the Writers' Association, uh, the Czech Writers' Association at the end of 1967, taking a position in support of uh, a number of writers were censored and uh, repressed in the Soviet Union, among uh, which Solzhenitsyn. Uh, so uh, there was this uh, public uh, position taken by the Writers' Association in, the, in uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, which was uh, um, um, uh, suppressed in an in a extreme stupid way by the Communist Party leadership. Uh, the, some of these writers were victimized, uh, they were, uh, some of their papers were closed down and so on. And that uh, ignited a movement uh, by the students in solidarity with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the intelligentsia, uh, a movement which was heavily repressed, with, uh, 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 heavily attacked by the secret police, uh, with students beaten up and so on. So that spread uh, shockwaves and created a situation of crisis in which uh, a big change in the Communist Party started to, uh, to happen. Uh, the change was the removal of Novotny. Uh, this big opposition in the bu within the bureaucracy was uh, getting uh, more and more support within the party and the trade unions and so on. Even Brezhnev was called by Novotny to come uh, and uh, participate in, uh, in a meeting of the Central Committee of the party at the end of 1967. And, uh, uh, Brezhnev was meant to support Novotny, but when he reala realized that uh, the scale of the opposition he was facing, he just washed his hands and said, okay, uh, go ahead with uh, uh, substitution. So uh, Dubček uh, was elected leader of the, of the uh, Communist Party. Who was Alexander Dubček? It's important to understand, uh, because he was not a revolutionary. I mean, he, uh, in his youth, uh, was part of the resistance movement 
fought against the Nazis. But since uh, he was educated in Soviet Union, was regarded by uh, the Soviet Union bureaucracy as one of ours, our Sasha, uh, Alexander Dubček. Uh, so he was a good candidate, coming from the apparatus of the Slovak Communist Party, a good candidate to replace Novotny. Uh, Dubček had maneuvered uh, his way up to become, uh, uh, to uh, enter into a leading position in the Communist Party uh, by a combination of things, which were mainly uh, a wave towards a liberalization, uh, easing uh, the repression on, uh, on uh, for example, uh, uh, the press and so on, uh, when he was uh, leader of the Slovak Communist Party since uh, 1963, so we are talking about already uh, several years. He started to build up his position within uh, Czechoslovakia uh, with his uh, brand as a uh, liber uh, liberalizer, uh, a more uh, uh, benign uh, approach towards uh, criticism and so on and so forth. And also using this criticism and directing it against the leadership of Novotny. So basically uh, he was elected on this wave uh, and started a program of reforms. Uh, immediately, uh, when Dubček was uh, nominated, he started uh, announcing, for example, on the 20th anniversary uh, celebration of uh, the February 48 uh, conquer of conquest of power by the Communist Party. <coughs> he delivered a speech saying, uh, basically, the message was, we need to change. And uh, that immediately raised enormous uh, expectations uh, in the mass of the uh, uh, people in, uh, uh, in Czechoslovakia. In April 68, uh, and that's the beginning of the process of the so-called Prague Spring, uh, he uh, delivered uh, what was called an action program. Uh, which was, uh, and what was the meaning of this action program by Dubček? The idea was to reform the system without touching the basis and uh, the basis of power and privilege by the bureaucracy. The bureaucracy was over-encompassing society, was controlling every aspect of uh, uh, Czechoslovak uh, life, uh, economically and uh, socially, uh, from all points of view. We're talking about a layer, a privileged layer, because of the position in the state apparatus, uh, um, uh, the bureaucracy was gaining from uh, that position. So. The idea uh, behind uh, Dubček's reform uh, was uh, not to touch the core of these uh, privileges uh, for the bureaucrats, but to allow a process of uh, national regeneration and create a situation where he could uh, find, uh, uh, ease some of the most repressive features of uh, the Stalinist regime up until then and uh, b uh, base himself on a, on a more genuine uh, level of mobili popular mo mobilization and support. So he established uh, or announced, which is different, announced the establishment of uh, a relative freedom of press. So uh, immediately uh, there was a big wave of new publications and papers and uh, uh, a big movement in the intelligentsia among the students, but also amongst the workers. Uh, the workers started publishing, every factory council started, started publishing their own, their own bulletin, their own uh, voice, and so on. Uh, a better focus on consumer goods in order to deliver, uh, and in order to do that, introducing uh, economic reforms, which are based on the idea of uh, giving uh, the, manager, uh, the factory managers uh, more power. So basically to build up a confrontation between different layers of the bureaucracy in order to shake up the whole productive machine, but never uh, to give uh, proper power to the working class in order to control uh, the bureaucratic mismanagement. That was never uh, uh, Dubček's uh, intention. And even uh, the idea of establishing a multi-party system, so to go back to the situation pre-1948, have a transition of 10 years towards uh, democratic election, which is a very ambitious program, um, uh, limiting the powers of the secret police, which were, was hated uh, or was uh, becoming more and more hated because of the way uh, the suppression of uh, uh, dis uh, dissidency and criticism and even uh, in, in terms of workers' uh, um, demands uh, was handled, uh, was often a matter of the secret police handling it. So it became more and more hated. <coughs> um, 
to establish a federation on equal grounds between the Czech Republic and the Slovakian uh, Republic, keep good relations uh, to the West, uh, and keep strong alliance with the Soviet Union, so to have uh, uh, the cake and eat it, as uh, they say here. <coughs> um, and then, uh, and then the slogan uh, which uh, encompassed all this program was socialism with a human face. And I think that really struck a chord, although it's kind of ironic because uh, it, it meant that before socialism uh, didn't have a human face. Uh, but um, ah, actually socialism was officially established in uh, Czechoslovakia in the early 1960s. Uh, following the declaration that socialism was uh, had been accomplished in the Soviet Union by Khrushchev. So uh, the idea was, well, if we have socialism, then do, why do we still have to go through all the transitional period where, uh, you know, uh, of the police state, basically. Uh, so th there was an element of that. And uh, that connected with the consciousness of millions of people. Uh, Dubček enjoyed enormous support. Uh, there was at some point a poll uh, which gave Dubček 78% of, uh, of support. The slogans in the demonstrations were Dubček, uh, Svoboda, the president, the new president, uh, uh, kind of twin figure with Dubček in uh, leading this process. Uh, Non-party organizations were tolerated. So we have uh, springing up uh, hundreds of associations, groups, uh, and so on, as a, as a process of the revolutionary uh, wave uh, that uh, was beginning. And basically what happened is uh, already in April, but then it radicalized throughout the spring and the summer, uh, a, a movement uh, of the youth, of the intelligentsia, but also the beginning of the movement of the working class demanding the immediate application of these measures. And uh, this is an, uh, a good example of uh, what we mean uh, when we say that the most dangerous moment for uh, a totalitarian regime or an autocracy uh, is when they attempt to reform the system because it opens up the venue which has been compressed for, for two <coughs> decades in this case, uh, the venue for uh, the rising uh, demands and legitimate demands of the youth and the working class, which uh, is the uh, feature, uh, the, the main feature of the process from now on. Dubček wants to limit this process, uh, has the approach of a bureaucrat, uh, and uh, shows it throughout the movement, trying to, to come down using his authority and uh, calm uh, the, the most uh, extreme demands of the workers and the youth promising uh, future delivery of uh, reforms and so on and so on. Uh, all this process uh, is witnessed by uh, the Soviet Union bureaucracy uh, in Moscow with uh, 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 a lot of fear. They know uh, this is a, a revolutionary process. They know uh, what uh, that Dubček is playing with fire. And they uh, start to put pressure on the Communist Party leadership to uh, to rein in this, uh, this process of reforms and stop the, pro the revolutionary process using their authority, the authority of the Soviet Union. But it's not 1948, it's not anymore 1948. 20 years have passed and uh, the authority, uh, huge authority still, but it's not enough to uh, stop the process. So basically there is a dynamic where the Communist Party leadership, the reformers, Dubček and the others, are pressurized from a huge mobilization of the working class. Uh, for example, there is the resurgence of the workers' councils, uh, which at some point at the peak, even after Soviet, uh, the Warsaw Pact invasion in August, reach about 60% of the working class uh, electing councils uh, in the factories. Although they're uh, kept uh, in a sort of advisory form, but they enter into constant conflict with the management, with the bureaucrats there, and so on. So it's a big, uh, it's a huge problem from the point of view of the bureaucracy. Pressure to slow down, and uh, uh, using uh, the specter of Hungary 1956. Hungary 1956 was uh, a political revolution, an enormous revolution of the working class in Hungary against uh, the bureaucracy and was suppressed in blood, uh, in a particularly violent way by the intervention of, uh, of Soviet troops. 
so Dubček and the other leaders were using that example, which obviously everyone know ab knew about, uh, as a way of scaring the working class and the youth into <coughs> not exceeding too much, not limiting their criticism, not to attack the Soviet Union, not to attack uh, the Communist Party, uh, not uh, to limit the criticism and so on. Uh, throughout the movement, Dubček was the leader of the movement, but at the same time also uh, he, he was not leading the movement. He wanted to uh, control the movement uh, and, and uh, just try to postpone or resist to these pressures that he was subject to from different parts. And I'm uh, going, I'm almost finished. <coughs> uh, so the, the process was uh, abrupt, uh, abruptly interrupted by the intervention of the, so of the Warsaw Pact troops, uh, mostly from the Soviet Union, but also from all the other countries around. And the reason for this intervention is that uh, the Soviet Union bureaucrats knew very well that uh, regeneration of uh, socialism, which was the aim, uh, although confused, because there were all sorts of demands even to establish some sort of protectorate by the United Nations or to include some kind of United Nations related uh, human rights code into the constitution and whatever, uh, by the demonstrators. Uh, so that, uh, it was confused. But it was a movement which was aimed at re-establishing um, something that uh, the working class in uh, Czechoslovakia had experienced between 45 and 48. Uh, because they, they had, for a short period of time, uh, experienced uh, not workers' democracy, fully-fledged workers' democracy, because that would be a bit too much, but uh, they have experienced the power of the mobilization of the working class by uh, defeating the Nazis first, and then uh, by pushing the whole process towards uh, the overthrow of capitalism throughout from 1945 to 1948. <coughs> so uh, the traditions of 1945 to 48 uh, come back. Uh, the workers' councils, the works uh, council, as uh, they were called, which had uh, played a part in the management of industry for the first two years after the liberation, uh, were re-established by the workers. Uh, the uh, revolutionary process was getting out of control and therefore uh, the Soviet Union uh, bureaucracy decided to, uh, to step in and the invasion uh, uh, was uh, aimed at suppressing, uh, putting a stop to this process. But the process was so radical uh, that it, uh, even the intervention of Soviet troops could not stop it altogether. Uh, the Soviet troops enter in the night between the 20th and 21st of August and are met by these demonstrations, mass demonstrations everywhere. Uh, Dubček's advice or lead is do not resist the troops. So uh, basically a, a complete capitulation. The leadership of the Communist Party is taken away. Dubček and the others <coughs> are taken away. They uh, are taken to face-to-face uh, -face chat with uh, uh, Brezhnev and company. And uh, they come back uh, a few days later when it's clear that just the intervention of military intervention is not sufficient to stop the process, are brought back in uh, as, uh, to, to spend their faces, to use their, their authority and so on, to uh, uh, help the stabilization of, uh, of the process. They uh, sign a deal. Uh, one of the leaders actually refused to do so, and that's to his credit, but all the others uh, capitulate to, to this uh, Soviet intervention and uh, sign a deal which is uh, the most, uh, it's called the Moscow Protocol. Basically it's a, it's a process of re-establishing the rule uh, of the bureaucracy over uh, Czechoslovakia. So uh, just to finish uh, in two minutes, the process is not finished there but obviously uh, the revolutionary wave is left without any leadership. Uh, the leaders capitulate completely uh, and uh, uh, withdraw from, uh, from the positions they have taken. They join uh, the normalization process. Dubček himself is still uh, left as uh, the, the head of the Communist Party for uh, uh, the next eight months. And that's how long uh, it took to the Soviet Union to bring down the, re the revolt in uh, Czechoslovakia. Uh, it took eight months. Uh, by April 1969, uh, the, uh, the movement is demoralized. Uh, the uh, factory councils 
dissolve themselves uh, because they, uh, they, they don't see any poss uh, possible development of uh, that. The revolution is defeated and Dubček is then removed uh, and uh, chucked away uh, in, uh, he, w he wasn't even killed. Uh, he could play uh, his role in the 1989 uh, Velvet Revolution just as a private c citizen coming back from, uh, uh, from uh, the past glory and, and so on. Uh, the impact, <coughs> the long-term impact and consequences of uh, this defeated revolution uh, were uh, very important. A crisis in the communist movement everywhere <coughs> with splits and, uh, for example, the Italian Communist Party lost about 300,000 members as a result of the repression in Czechoslovakia. Uh, it was a huge party, one and, one and a half million members at the time. Uh, there was uh, widespread demoralization, but I think uh, the worst, uh, the, the most uh, long um, drawn impact of uh, the defeat of the, of, the, uh, of the Czechoslovak movement was on the bureaucracy itself. Because basically I think uh, the uh, bureaucracy in Czechoslovakia and in uh, all the neighboring country uh, realized that there was no easy way out of the crisis of their own system and started looking at alternatives. And these alternatives were not the revolutionary uh, regeneration of socialism, which would mean them losing their own privileges but looking towards uh, a way of achieving the goals uh, of uh, Dubček, uh, therefore to reform the system by maintaining their own position and without threatening their own position. Uh, and the experience of, uh, of uh, uh, Czechoslovakia in 1968 showed that that was not possible. That was not possible as long as the Soviet Union was still there and as long as uh, 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 they could intervene in, uh, in, in this way. So they started looking for alternatives. And that's the reason why uh, the transition after uh, 1989, when the, a new crisis uh, emerged, starting from uh, the Soviet Union and reverberating throughout uh, the uh, Eastern European bloc, um, and then also ha have having a rebound impact on the Soviet Union, uh, a very complex process. In this process, the bureaucracy uh, uh, went along uh, all the way uh, towards the perspective of capitalist restoration. And it was very, uh, they played a leading role in the process uh, towards capitalist restoration in uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, which uh, Dubček in his last years tried to oppose. Uh, although he supported the Velvet Revolution, he opposed the partition of uh, Czechoslovakia into Slovakia and the Czech Republic, but that was just uh, uh, the last uh, utopian stand of, uh, of uh, failed reform and not, not the revolutionary. And uh, uh, the consequences of the defeat of 1968 uh, Prague Spring have uh, played uh, a long way in the, uh, deciding the direction of the transition in uh, Eastern Europe uh, in, uh, 20 years later. I'll stop there. Thanks.